and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be looking at how to create a low collar on a bodice block which is bespoke to you. You will have already drafted out your bodice block so let's go and grab that and take a look at how we can create this gorgeous elegant collar to our bodice block. I'm Izzy and I'm going to be talking you through step by step how to adapt your bespoke bodice block to create this shape. So you will need your standard pattern drafting tools which are listed next to me right here and then we're just going to get straight on into it. So let's go to the overhead shot. For the purpose of this series all about collars I wanted to remove the dart from the shoulder and I've just rotated it all the way down to the waist to create a combined waist dart. If you're not sure how to do that you can always refer back to video 45 where I talk you through how to do that step by step. So that's going to be our starting point. Let's start looking at how to adapt the block now. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is actually to draw in a neckline. We're going to be tweaking this neckline in a little while, but let's draw um, a draft of a neckline to start off with. I'm going to have my neckline very simply just come down to run parallel with the apex at this point. Keep that nice and simple. So just mark a nice point along your center front at that location. I want my collar to come straight up to the neck point up here and I just want it to kind of sit really nice and gently. So find a nice curve that you're happy with and just draw that in. At this point, we're just gonna cut out that neckline. We've got a few other alterations we're gonna to do to the block, so we'll do those together step by step. Now, because we've got quite a low cut neckline, what we want is the curve of this area to sit nice and flat against our bust. However, we've got a bit of a um, curve going in at that point haven't we so if we've got it on our top it's going to curve in around our bust at that point and we want it to sit really nice and flat so what we're actually going to do is to create a dart in this area to help the fabric sit nice and flat in that area so we're going to draw in a dart there to start off with draw a line from the apex to about a third of the way up your neckline next find the center point of your waist dart and draw a line from there up to the apex. Along the neckline, I want you just to draw a point that is six millimeter offset from your line. And that will become the other leg of your dart. So join that point up with the apex. Cut out the volume of your neckline dart. Next, cut along the center line of your waistline dart, leaving a pivot point at the apex. Remove the volume from the neckline and then just rotate the, the bodice around to close up that neckline dart. And what that does is it's going to just open up the waist dart a little bit further. And at this point, just soften off that neckline curve again. So you've got a really nice curve to your neckline. And then just cut out that neckline so it's nice and easy for you to see. Next, take your back bodice piece and I just want you to line it up with the neck point up here. So starting at the centre front down here, draw in a line or a shape that you think would look nice. I'm going to do a straight line at that point. And then around the back, I want uh, the collar to be around five centimetres in depth again. So I'm just marking a few little reference points here. Um, as I shape the collar and try and find a nice curve that I think will work really nicely, I always want it to be at least five centimetres in depth. I want the fall of the collar to be that wide. So I've got a kind of shape there and what I really want is to create a nice curve between those two. So I'm looking at sort of this bit down here where that meets. I want a bit more of an exaggerated collar down there. So let's just add that curve in. And you may just want to freehand draw some of this as well. Now at this point, we're actually going to take the collar piece off, trace over it as it is without adding our seam allowances. We're not creating our pattern piece yet. We're going to trace over it as it is and we're going to manipulate it a little bit further. So go and grab some tracing paper and we'll trace over it together now. I'm going to add a notch where the shoulder seam is, just as a nice little reference. At this point, we want to divide the top of the collar into about five pieces. So what we're going to do is, for me, I'm just going to mark a point at five centimetres offset all the way along the collar till I get to around here. We're trying to do it from the centre back line to about 
two thirds of the way along the collar. We're not really too bothered about the bottom bit because that should sit nice and flat because we've accommodated the volume change across the bust through the dart that we put into our front bodice already. But I'm just going to mark some points at five centimeters offset around the curve of this neckline. Draw in those lines so they're running perpendicular to the neckline. Next, along the outer edge, I just want you to mark a point that is one centimetre away from each of those lines. Cut along those lines you've just drawn, leaving a pivot point at the neckline. The final thing to do is just to begin to overlap the collar pieces by pivoting at the neck point and overlap them by that one centimetre offset line you drew. Continue that process for all four. Once again with the collar piece, um, we do want the under collar to sit nice and flat underneath the upper collar. So I'm just going to offset the outer edge of the collar by two or three millimeters and trace that on as our under collar line. Okay, let's trace over those collars and add our seam allowances as required. So we'll do the upper collar first, tracing around our red line. And don't forget to mark where the seam line is for the shoulder seam as your notch at that point. And I'll take your pattern piece. Place on fold, grain line, low neckline collar, upper collar, cut one on fold. Once you've done the upper collar, let's then move on and just draft out the pattern piece for the under collar, which remember is just a little bit smaller around the outside. We're following the green line for this one. Don't forget that with collars, it's sometimes really helpful and generally is very helpful <laughs> to use interfacing underneath your collar. So you may want to annotate your pattern piece to say to use interfacing on both the under and the upper or just the under or just the upper, depending on the thickness of your fabric and also the aesthetic that you want. When you use interfacing, it can make the fabric a little bit more stiff. So if you want that aesthetic on the outer, on the top, bit, the upper bit of the collar, then use your interfacing on the upper collar. If you'd rather have a kind of um, more drapey look to your collar, but you still want it to kind of sit in the right place, then put your interfacing in on the under collar. After we've done the collar, we're then going to move on and just create the pattern pieces for the back and the front bodice. Let's look at the front pattern piece to start off with. First thing we're going to do is to offset a line that is 2.5 centimeters from the center front. This becomes our button stand effectively. Next, I'm going to use this little sewing gauge button tool to allocate the locations of where I want the buttons. I want one right at the top underneath the collar and obviously I want some down at the bottom as well. So let's just mark a point where our buttonholes want to be and then draw a line which is parallel to the centre front at just two millimetres offset from the centre front line. I'm just going to draw that in pencil because it's such a fine close line. The next thing to do is just to mark where the buttonholes are going to go. So they're going to um, extend just, well for the sake of this one, two centimetres long. And they're going to extend two millimetres on the centre front line. Repeat that marking process for the other two buttonholes or however many buttonholes you have. And then also just mark where your buttons are with a nice X along the centre front if you wish to. The final thing to do is to add your facing line which we're going to do using a green pen. And my facing line is just going to be four centimetres offset around the neckline and then maybe coming in at eight centimetres offset from here. The only other thing we need to do is just to redraw in our waist dart because we added in the extra volume when we took out the volume from the neckline. So find at the centre point of your waist dart Draw a line up to the apex, mark a point two centimetres off 
away from the apex, which will obviously be the top of where those legs were originally for the dart. And then just draw in your new darts legs. They're just going to be marginally smaller. It's good to get it right and accurate. So the first thing we're going to do is just trace off our facing and then we'll trace over our bodice block and add the seam allowances. Create the pattern for the facing, adding seam allowances where necessary. And once you've done your facing, you can just shift that across and do your actual pattern piece for your bodice. Adding your seam allowances as shown. We're going to move on now to our back pattern piece and just add our facings onto the block. Our facing was only four centimetres um, when it hit the front shoulder. So I'm just going to dot in where the facing is going to sit for this one. Okay, so we're going to trace around our back bodice to start off with. Don't forget that we are cutting the centre back on the fold and add the seam allowances as shown. Excellent, once you've drawn that one out, let's shift the tracing paper down and we will draw our facing pattern piece. Adding the seam allowances as shown and with the centre back placed on the fold. Brilliant. Cut out all of those pieces out of your tracing paper and then go and grab your calico or your final fabric, whatever you're doing, and cut your pattern pieces out of fabric. Don't forget to transfer your line markings of your darts and your notches as you do that. Once you've done that, come back and join me and we will sew it up together. We'll begin the sewing journey by sewing up all of the darts on both the front and the back bodice. If you're not sure how to do this, you can refer to video 22, where we talk you all the way through how to sew a dart in lots of detail. Once you've sewn all the darts, press them all towards the side seams. Next, with right sides together, we're just going to pin the shoulder seams together. And once we've pinned both shoulder seams, we're then going to sew using our standard seam allowance. Then just press those seams open. So what we really want is we want to have um, all of this joined together like that. So with the right sides together, we're just going to flip one over like that and pin that in place. Just want to make sure as we're pinning it that um, at 1.5 centimeters offset from the raw edge we've got the fabric overlapping and touching and likewise with right sides together just pin this side over here and then just press those seams open we're going to move on to our collars next. And if you haven't already done this, I'd recommend just labeling which one is your upper and which one is your under collar. And we're just gonna sew around the style edge around the outer edge of the collar. Now the under collar is marginally smaller than the outer collar, so it's not going to match up exactly. But the points where we want it to match up will be um, up here and set at the corresponding location at the other end. So we're going to just pin that in place up here and then just match up the point so they're overlapping beautifully at the point down here. And you should just be able to sort of ease in that collar line. I'm just going to pin the centre um, so I've got ensuring I've got the same amount of ease to pin in on either side. And then I'm just going to flip it around and start to just pin all the way along. Once you pin that in place, we're just going to sew all the way around using our standard seam allowance. So this is my under collar. <laughs> you can see it's shorter, isn't it? And what we're going to do is we're just going to trim our under collar seam allowance in half. This is going to help the collar just sit nice and flat and reduce the bulk in this area. Turn it the right side out and then iron it in place. Okay, so we've got our bodice um, sitting right side facing up. 
And what we want to do is to put our collar on top of that here with um, the upper part of the collar facing up and the under part of the collar facing down onto the fabric. Um, if you've not already marked a notch where your center front line is on your garment, do that now and then locate the end of the collar at that notch and do the same for the other side. Next, we're going to align our notches, which are our seam notches here, with our seams of our shoulders up here. And then just pin everything else in place all around, making sure that you're pulling the under collar um, up so that in line with the raw edge all the way along the neckline. Once you've pinned the collar in place, we're going to just baste it in place all the way around within the seam allowance. So that will be probably one centimetre offset from the raw edge. You can use a longer stitch length at this point if you'd like to. So two, so rather than our standard 2.5 millimetre stitch length, we can increase that to four or five millimetre stitch length. Next, we're just going to take our facing and attach it across the um, entire front of the collar and down the button stand as well. Now the button stands that we have um, drafted for this particular uh, pattern are is quite <laughs> quite wide uh, and it may be that once you've done this one you might just take a look at that and think oh actually you want it to be a bit less or you know you just want to change the aesthetics of it and that is the absolute joy of drafting your own patterns because you can just do whatever you want to and make the alterations as you see fit so just give a few things a go see how it looks mix it up a bit change it if you want to and the other things worth mentioning is that with the facing, obviously if you're doing this for real, you'll want to finish the raw edges of the facing. Okay, let's sew all those three things together, our bodice, collar and facing, using our standard seam allowance and stitch length. Brilliant. Okay, so once again, if you want to do some sort of tailoring techniques, you can just trim down uh, the seam allowance. But I would definitely recommend you clip the corners and also clip any curves that we've got going. However, yeah, you might find it helpful just to trim the facing down, the facing seam down in half. You're going to want to turn that facing on into the inside now and then just press all of that in place. Oh, this is beginning to look nice now, isn't it? Check out that, okay. So the final thing that we need to do is just sew up our side seams. So let's pop this right sides together and just pin those side seams in place. And once you pin them, we're gonna sew them using our standard seam allowance. Lovely. Okay, let's go and press those side seams open and then we can try it on. So here you go. This is our gorgeous low neckline collar that we've drafted out together. And you can see how just the little tweaks to the bodice have really helped the fit of the collar just to sit really beautifully. This is such an elegant top and I actually really like it. I love how you could um, change the shape of the collar so that it's um, bigger or more dramatic or even sort of um, scalloped or shaped in some way which would actually make it like a real feature. You could also add piping, oh so many different details that you could do. <laughs> Well, that draws this little episode to a close. Thank you for joining me as we've looked at how to create this gorgeous neckline. It's been really fun to look at the drafting techniques and to see what that's going to look like and how that ends up. Do let us know your thoughts on this episode and this type of collar, this shape of collar in the comments below. We always love to hear from our maker community here at Minerva. Thank you for joining me today. I've been Izzy at Minerva and I will see you next week for some more collar drafting.